Amen, amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Oh, let's try that again. Good morning. There we go. Good to see all of you on this brisk morning that maybe requires a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> We're glad you're here today. Welcome home to those that are online today. If you are new this morning and we haven't met, my name's Kyle. I'm one of the pastors here, and we're excited about today. We've been in a series called Light in the Tunnel. Can you say that with me? Light in the Tunnel. And the truth is, many of us have heard the expression, well, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, But the reality is, is that Jesus died so that we could have light in the tunnel. That's our series principle. Light doesn't just come at the end of the tunnel. Let's read it together. Jesus died so we could have light in the tunnel, and that's hope, and that's comfort for us today. So if you're tuning in or you've turned up today to be here this morning and you're dealing with something heavy or dealing with something that makes you feel uneasy today, just know that Jesus died so that he could ha- we could have his presence. We are not alone. Amen? Amen. So we're going to talk about uh, something today that all of us at some point have experienced, maybe even some of us battle, and that is anxiety or anxious thoughts. And so today, even as I say that, some of you are feeling that this morning. Um, so here's what we're going to do today. We actually um, videoed past, or, uh, Pastor Matt, who's our college pastor, and Brian, who is our tech director, who battle with anxiety and anxious thoughts. So we're going to watch them for a little bit on this video, and then we're going to look at Jesus and how he dealt with some of the suffering that he dealt with. So take a look at this. All right, everyone, we are talking anxiety today, and we've got Brian and Matt with us today. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll just jump right into it. Brian, we'll have you go first. Tell us a little bit about your struggle with anxiety. Well, I don't know about you, Matt, but even right now, my anxiety is going crazy. (laughs) Yeah, that's why. Even though there's (laughs) nobody out here right now. But uh, a little bit about my story. I mean, mine started couple of years ago through COVID a little bit. and you So know, you didn't have it prior to COVID? No, it was almost in the middle of COVID when mine started. And, you know, it was, it was very scary. Yeah. Almost, especially because mine started happening more whenever I was on stage. And so for me, it was very hard because I was getting up on stage and I was singing songs about praising the Lord and God is good and stuff. And then over here, I'm just sitting, my stomach is in knots going crazy. I felt like my heart was going to explode out of my chest. And like, I was like, man, everybody can see that I'm just sweating like crazy. Yeah. It was almost this physiological thing. Yeah. 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 Like, so I thought everybody here in the congregation probably knew something's wrong with Brian. Yeah. But I guess most people had no idea what was going on. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's when it started for me is basically a couple years ago, and I'm still dealing with stuff. Right. I remember, and some of us know this, but I remember when Brian was leading worship, um, there was a, there was, it was at the end of the service. We had one song left. I don't know if you remember this or not. And uh, it was time for Brian to come up to lead the worship. No, Brian. No, Brian, no, Brian. And I'm thinking, where's Brian? And then you finally did come up. But then Brian shared with me after service that you were having anxiety. Yeah, I I don't know. Right when I was getting ready to come up, like I just started having like a full on anxiety attack in the back. I ran to the bathroom. I was sitting there throwing cold water on my face, trying to just calm myself down and stuff. And, you know, there's stuff that you try to do to calm yourself down. Right. Sometimes it's it just takes a while. Yeah. So, yeah. Then I eventually came out and everything was okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Right. So, Brian, yours has been going on since COVID. Matt, yours has been a battle for quite a while. Oh. Yeah. Share, us a little, share a little bit about yours. So, I've had anxiety ever since I was in high school. Um, they weren't ever too bad in high school. Um, they progressively, they've progressively gotten worse the older I get. Yeah. And the more frequent the older I've gotten. Um, a big moment was whenever I had uh, my wreck in Kansas City. Uh huh. Um, that left me completely like shattered. I, from that point, it was consistent for me to have, um, even now, I'm kind of getting by me. <laughs> Um, I would have anxiety attacks 
like consistently at like two o'clock every morning. Huh. So like the, the, a, a normal routine for me became go to bed, get up at two in the morning with the panic <clears> attack <throat> and with anxiety, um, get in the shower because right. hot water to try to like just calm, relax, my, calm me and relax my muscles, go back to bed. And I would just do that on repeat. And it was every day. In fact, for the longest time, and this was more the trauma piece of it, but I couldn't even go through Kansas City without it spreading. Right an anxiety attack or panic attack. We'd have to go all the way around to like Clinton, Missouri, and then which is two hours out of the way, and then go all the way another two hours just to get around Kansas City because I just physically mm -hmm. couldn't do it. Cause it. And that was just more like the trauma thing. I'm, I'm well past that part. But yeah, it's still just the, the anxiety attacks. Um, I've, I've, I've always dealt with them. They just have, kind of have gotten progressively worse. Gotcha. So one of the things that people usually tend to do is if it's not something we battle or struggle with, we tend to not be able to relate to it. And so we think maybe it's not that big of a thing. So question I had was, <clears throat> what are some typical responses that you've heard or just some typical statements from people that you've heard, maybe even other believers when it comes to anxiety? And they don't necessarily mean, mean to hurt some feelings, but they just say things maybe a little bit out of ignorance about anxiety. Matt, you, you, maybe you go first on that one. Um, I think some of the more common ones that I've heard are just, we'll trust God more, or we'll just stop having it, mm -hmm. and, or stop, stop being anxious. And for me, why that is always unhelpful is because in my, like, mentally, emotionally, I'm not worried. I'm not anxious. I'm not fearful. I, there, there's none of those things. It's, it's a bodily reaction I can't that I can't help my chest is pounding like Brian said it's yeah. like it's gonna explode there's sharp pains that I only can really <clears throat> equate to like it feels like I'm gonna have a heart attack hmm. it, it I can't control whether those sharp pains come or go right and my hands would get clammy and I would break out in like a cold sweat I can't control right. how, what my body does <clears throat> and so I could be perfectly fine mentally and emotionally, I'm not anxious or anything, but my body is acting or reacting in a way that is not congruent, right. I guess, with like my, if that's the right word, with my mind or my emotions. So like, that's why that's unhelpful. It's like, I can't control that. I right. can't control my, the, the, the cold sweats. I can't control my hands getting clammy. I can't control yeah. the sharp pains in my chest. I wish I could, but like, right. I can't. So that, I think that's probably been the most unhelpful because then it feels... It feels defeating. It's like, wow, yeah. I really can't just, I can't, I just can't do it. Yeah. Like there's something wrong with me if sure. I can't do it. So it just kind of is more defeating to hear that than anything else. Yeah. Brian, what about you? Yeah, I mean, so just like Matt said, you know, people coming up and, oh, you just got to have more faith. And it's like, I do believe. Yeah. Like I am believing so hard right now. Yeah. Like I've prayed, I've gotten into the word and stuff. And so like sometimes it's, it is defeating. Right. To hear people say that. But I mean, another thing is you have people come up and, oh, well, what sin do you have in your life that, you know, that you're holding on to? Really? And stuff. So, I mean, th there's a lot of different responses that come up through this. And I think it's really hard for people to understand anxi anxiety when they've never had it. Right. Because I never understood it until I started having it. And it changed my view on it drastically. Yeah. I that's think good. that's a good thing to know is like anxiety doesn't <clears throat> necessarily equal anxious thoughts, fearful thoughts, worried right. thoughts, right? The Bible talks about not being anxious or worried or right. fearful. Anxiety doesn't always equal anxious thoughts, fearful thoughts, worried thoughts. It's right. Sometimes it's just our body is act, reacting in a way that we cannot control. Right. That's not us not having enough faith. That's our body is going through something that we Right. Yeah. Because I can relate to that, Matt, because I've, I mean, not just me, all of us have had anxious thoughts, anxious moments, um, but not all of us have dealt with anxiety. And so this is, this is very helpful. Um, another thought, another question, um, and go with Matt on this one. How have you seen God help you with your anxiety or when you have those anxious moments? How has he come into the picture with this? Um, well, for me... It took 
God using a couple college students when I started as the college pastor here to say like, dude, you really like just need to like, just go talk to a doctor, see what he has to say. Yeah. Because to that point I was too prideful. So one, <clears throat> God used two individual students to just speak into me to say like, Hey, like it's okay to go to the doctor and like, just see what he has to say. I think secondly, um, being on medication, I'm now on medication for it. And just yeah. being on that, I, I still give God praise even for that. God has given us the ability to like, as hum, humans to figure out all the nuances of our brains and our bodies and like to create medicine that can help us. Right. I, God works through doctors. God can work through doctors. Right. Yeah. And so being on medication has helped. I don't have the consistent 2 a.m. showers anymore. And in fact, the only time I'm typically anxious anymore, if you see like my knee shaking or if you see like I'm doing this, then a thing you could probably ask is, did you take your anxiety medicine? And I'll probably laugh and say, nope, I forgot. Yeah. And that, and that's when it typically happens more. But I think that's where I've seen God work the most is just through people encouraging me that it's okay and through medicine. Yeah, that's it's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Matt. What about you, Brian? Well, I mean, I'm pretty much along the same lines as Matt. You know, it took people talking to me and stuff. And I mean, I talked to you when it first started going on, and you pointed me to Todd Bowman. And I went and started seeing him. I even went and saw my doctor. And let me tell you, just my anxiety was going crazy when I went and saw my doctor to, you know, explain what was going on but the moment that he said you're dealing with anxiety that was like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders to know that you know i'm not going crazy i'm right. not losing it and stuff and what i'm feeling is is actually something right so i mean people just pouring into my life when all this was happening and stuff and just even throughout it when i was dealing with it finding out more people around me were dealing with it and so just being able to talk to each other and just, yeah, just live life and sort of get through it together mm -hmm. instead of trying to get through it on your own, you know, and think it's a weakness right. that you have to hide. Yeah. This is so helpful because it's not just obviously you guys. We've got a bunch of people in our services this morning or online this morning um, that are dealing with it. And not only those, but maybe you have friends that, that don't attend that, that deal with it. So this is very helpful today. Hey, this is kind of a practical question. Um, what are some practical things that help when you're feeling anxiety coming on? Uh, Matt, you've shared a little bit about that. And I know, Brian, you've got some stuff too. So how have you found, um, Brian mentioned earlier, just putting water on his face. But what are some practical things you do when you, when it, maybe it's getting out of control for you? So I'm big on just going for a walk. Um, the first time after the accident that I had, after my car wreck, that I had an anxiety attack, we were actually on the road, and Rye, my wife, made me pull over to the side of the road. <clears throat> and, yes, I was driving. We, we get off to the side of the road. I get out, and she just had me start walking. And at yeah. once I was walking back and forth up and down this little gravel road, this little dirt road. And then at one point, I, um, she started asking me, okay, like, how many trees are in that field or like what color is the like is the sun out and so it was little specific things to get me to focus on something other than the anxiety attack but right. also then it was just she at one point had me start deep breathing and so it was with those like the deep breath practices right in through the nose out through the mouth and like you hold it for a few seconds it. and it's focusing on my breathing and controlling that because with my anxiety attacks, at least, there's a lot of times where my breath feels super shallow and quick and I can't catch my breath. Right. So to just to be able to focus on that instead of focusing on the anxiety itself, focusing on deep, natural breaths, focusing on something else in the environment, those are things that have really helped me. Once again, when it was in the evenings, like, like I said, I would, get a, I would get in the shower, right? The, the hot water, relaxing my muscles, relaxing me a bit. I was able to do my deep breathe, breathing exercises in the shower as well. Those are some of the things that I would use to calm me down and still use if I need to. Yeah, that's good. Brian, what about you? When I first started going through anxiety, like when I was up here leading worship, a lot of the times I was up here 
I was playing my guitar, looking at the sheet music. I'm singing, oh, we praise you. And I'm over here in my head. I'm like, okay, think of five things that I can see. Okay, what are five yep. things I can smell? What are five things I can feel? Like the five, five, five rule. Yeah, tell them about that. That's, I mean, that's what some doctors recommend is just taking a breath, basically, and just thinking, okay, what are five things that I can see in this room? Okay, the cameras, the chairs, my shoes, and just the lights, you know, or what can I smell? What so you were I... multitasking, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Worsh worshiping and trying to... It, it was crazy because I was like, everybody can see that. I'm just not on point. I'm not on my game. I didn't notice it I'm, at all. I'm over here doing 800 things in my head to try to <laughs> get my mind off of this. But, I mean, that that helped quite a bit. And, you know, like Matt said, going for walks and stuff. And even right now, I, I'm on... I was on two anxiety medications. I'm only on one now. And really, the only times I take it is when I know my anxiety is going to kick in. Hmm. Like I've started recognizing my triggers. And that has helped a lot because I can like start preparing my mm -hmm. mind to like, you know, this is what's going to start happening. That this is this is not from God. Yeah. And stuff. So, I think realizing your triggers medication and all that i mean there's a ton of stuff i did yeah. so but i mean not not everything that i do and not everything that matt does is going to work for some sure sure the five 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 rule is not going to work for everybody right right it's good so brian we'll go with you first this time um and this is our last question but what would be a word of encouragement to someone today um, that's here or listening online that also battles anxiety. And honestly, as we started to put this series together, that's something we've heard a lot from people is this this topic of anxiety. So there are, I mean, I don't even know who they are, but I know we've got people in this sanctuary right now and online who are battling it. What What's some encouragement you could give them today? I mean, we sort of talked about this earlier, just knowing you're not alone. Yeah, like that's a big thing is knowing you're not crazy, you're not losing it and everything like God is with you through it. And there are people here in this room that will be here for you also. Yeah. So that's good. Matt, what about you? I would say. Don't my encouragement is probably just. Be okay with going and talking to your doctor. Like, go do that. It's going to be the most helpful thing you do, right? Yeah. You, there's that um, fun little story of, uh, like, the guy who said, who, like, prays for God to, like, pr pr provide him a way out. And the helicopter comes, right? All these different things come, and he never takes, the, never takes it. All those are little moments of light in the tunnel. Yeah, that's good. Options or provisions that God has used right. for this guy, and yet he doesn't end up taking them all. Right. And he wonders why. But he, he was completely blind to it. And I think, man, medicine is an opportunity. Like going to a doctor, talking to someone who knows what they're talking about is an opportunity. It's just a little light that you can use to say, okay. Like, like Brian said, it, it lifted a weight off his shoulders to even hear a medical yeah. professional say, you have anxiety. And it, it's okay. There's no shame in that. You're not weak for doing that. Like you need that. And that's right. okay. Right. Circling back to you for a minute, Brian, you talked about, we talked about doctors and going to the doctors, but also you had mentioned going and talking to someone, uh, Dr. Bowman, who's a psychologist. Um, so for some, they need to go to a doctor. Actually, you guys, you went to a doctor and you went to a counselor. Yes. Any thoughts on so them talking to someone from a counseling I mean, perspective? It's interesting because it seems like in today's culture, like people who go and talk to somebody or talk to a therapist or something or seen as weak. Yeah. You know, and so for me, it was, it was really good going to my doctor and getting medication <clears throat> and everything. But then when I was able to go and see, I just did a zoom with Dr. Bowman and, you know, it was just, it, he, he was very good on the biblical side of stuff too. Uh -huh. So he was able to, sort of talk me through, you know, what the Bible says a little bit too, but also he was able to give me some more things that I could try to do to help with my anxiety and sort of 
what fears came to mind when my anxiety started happening mm -hmm. and writing it down and everything. So, I mean, to me, they really helped me, the medication, but also going and talking to somebody. And I mean, I went and talked to somebody also right after we had the house fire and stuff. Mm. I messaged Todd Bowman and stuff. And I was like, my anxiety is going crazy right now. Yeah. For those who don't know, Brian and Kristen lost their house in a house fire. How long ago was that, Brian? It's probably a year and a half ago. And I'm sure that yeah. added to your anxiety. So, yeah, I thought, you know, my anxiety is going down. I'm all good. And then that happens. And, yeah. you know, if events and stuff add stuff to your Triggers anxiety. Triggers it. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm all for, you know, going and talking to somebody. Yeah. And, you know, to that, to kind of wrap this up, a pattern I'm seeing as we're sitting here talking is, is that, man, what the enemy wants to do is to keep us off in the corner and dealing with whatever it is, right? But talking to God, talking to other people, getting help. And so just encourage you with that today. Um, guys, thanks so much for being willing to come up here and share. And um, like Brian mentioned in the beginning, when we were talking about talking about anxiety, I think Brian <laughs> made the comment, just talking about it is giving me anxiety. <laughs> so thank you for being willing to do that today. Yeah. Um, we appreciate you guys. All right, let's give them a hand for doing that. <clears throat> well, we kind of heard um, Brian and Matt share their story. Obviously, all of us have different stories. Um, but I wanted to look at Jesus for a few minutes today, because obviously this is kind of a heavy topic. Um, when I talk with people just in general and making observation, this is something that all of us deal with, at least at a minimum of anxious thoughts at times. And I was thinking of a story in scripture where Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Some of you may remember that story where he knows he's going to be arrested. He knows that he's getting ready to go on trial. And I, I just want to read something to you this morning that I, that I found that I thought was helpful. Um, the intense anguish and sorrow Jesus felt was certainly understandable. Being God, Christ knew that all, all that was going to happen to him. He knew in painstaking detail the events that were to follow soon after he was betrayed by one of his very own disciples. He knew he was about to undergo several trial, trials where all the witnesses against him would lie. He knew that many who hailed him as the Messiah only days earlier would now be screaming for his crucifixion. He knew he would be flogged nearly to the point of death. Before they pounded the metal spikes into his flesh, he knew the prophetic words of Isaiah spoken seven centuries earlier that he would be beaten so badly that he would be disfigured beyond that of any man and beyond human likeness. And certainly these things factored into his great anguish and sorrow, causing his sweat to fall to the ground like great drops of blood. This story we see in Luke chapter 22. Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you will not give into temptation. He walked away, but a stone, about a stone's throw away and knelt down. And what did he do, church? What did he do? He prayed. And here's what he prayed. He said, Father, if you're willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. This is one of the most comforting things. We, we worship a God who identifies with our suffering. Amen. He was tempted. He, he suffered in the same ways that we do. And that's showing his humanity there. And then he says, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. In fact, let's read that again. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. And then an angel appeared. And what did the angel do? Strengthen him. And then he prayed, how? More fervently. And he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like what? Great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and he returned to the disciples only to find them asleep, <clears throat> exhausted from grief. He said, why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. I was reading online a little bit about this and I'm obviously not a doctor, and I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express, but the reality is, is there's this term, and I, if you're a doctor, I, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing this, but it's like hematidrosis, and <clears throat> here's what it is. It's, it's a rare but ver a very real medical condition that causes one's sweat to contain blood. 
The sweat glands are surrounded by tiny blood vessels that can constrict and then dilate to the point of rupture, causing blood to effuse into the sweat glands. The cause of this is what? Extreme anguish. Now, does that mean that Jesus for sure had that? I don't know. But we do know of a condition that can cause this. Literally, Jesus was so anguished that the Bible tells us he was, he was grieved by what he was going to have to do. He was grieved by the weight of, of what was going to happen. He was grieved by the fact that he was going to be arrested. All the different pieces that I read earlier. And it got to the point where the scripture says that his sweat was like drops of blood. So with that being said, what do we know for certain? Here's what we know. Jesus was experiencing extreme anguish extreme suffering? Was it anxiety? Was it worry? Was it, well, we know that he was in pain. We know that he was in suffering. We know that he was mentally taxed with what was before him. Again, something that we can relate to, not to this level necessarily, but he can identify with us. So with that in mind, here's some questions. What did Jesus do when he experienced extreme anguish, what, did, what, what was his response to that? Because we think about whether it's anxiety or worry or fear or doubt or all the different emotions that come into play, depression, all the different things that we've been covering. What did he do? Well, here's what he did. He knelt down and what did he do, church? He prayed. Man, when we're, and again, I, I, I'm just being honest with you today. I have all kinds of things I deal with. Anxiety is not my thing. But that's why I had Brian and Matt share today. But all of us, whether it's anxiety or something different, we can relate on some level to something that we deal with emotionally or stress-wise or whatever else. And what do we do when we feel those moments? We talk with God. Amen? We come to him and we bring these things and we drop them off at his feet. Now, I'm just being honest with you. One of the things, my wife is not only my wife, she is my very best friend. And I can go home and I can talk to her. And sometimes when I talk to her, that talk helps. And sometimes when I talk to her, I just unburden myself and now she's got all this stuff. And it didn't fix anything other than I just got it off my chest. But the reality is, is that we have a savior in Jesus that died so that we, he could have a personal relationship with us, which means that we don't have to carry this stuff around. We can give it to him. Amen. Amen. In fact, Scripture says that, that when he prayed, the angels appeared, and what did they do? What did they do, church? They strengthened him. So as we come to him, we can receive his peace. And then it says, not only did he continue to pray, but he prayed how? More fervently. More fervently. So here's some takeaways uh, this morning. First of all, we just need to understand that Jesus identifies with our suffering. Amen? He identifies with our suffering. In fact, Scripture says that he knows the number of hairs on our head. He knows us intimately. We were created in his image. And so this morning, we can take heart. We can take comfort in the fact that he understands loss. He understands grief. He understands worry and doubt and fear and anxious thoughts. He identifies with us. And we don't have to face our stress and anxieties alone. Something mad, I believe it was, said earlier. I said, you know, what, what are some things you could to encourage us today? And Matt said, just know you're not alone. Man, one of the things the enemy loves to do is to get us feeling like we're the only one, right? Um, I've said this before, but if you watch like the National Geographic and you watch Lions they never attack the herd, right? They're always looking for the one that's not paying attention or, you know, that maybe is, is off by themselves. And that's what the enemy, that's his strategy as well. He wants us to believe that we're the only one, that somehow there's something wrong with us. But the reality is, is we don't have to face those things alone. We can take them to God in prayer. Oh, come on, that's just kind of an easy thing. No, we can't. We can take those things to him in prayer. And here's another one. Worship is not a feeling, it's a choice. And we can choose to praise him even when we feel anxious and stressed. Let's read that together. We can choose to praise him even when we feel anxious and stressed. 
Well, here's an obvious scripture, right, that many of us have heard over the years and, and, and fits nicely and neatly into this today, but all of us at times hear this and it stresses us out to even think about it, but it has some good truth in it. It says, don't worry about anything, instead pray about what? Everything. Man, that's what Paul says in his letter to Philippi. And then we kind of think about that. Other versions say, don't be anxious about anything, right? Instead, pray about everything. And we kind of stop there. But then there's this next sentence I think is really important. He says, tell God what you and thank him for. Let's read that again. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. In fact, can we just stop for just a second and ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes for a second? Paul says, tell God what you need. What do you need today? For some of you, we're talking about this topic and it's right where you're at. For others of you, it may be hard for you to relate to this. All of us know someone who's dealing with this. So maybe for you, it's not anxiety, but what is it you need this morning? And and I realize God is not a genie in the bottle. We don't just give him a Christmas wish list and he gives us everything that we need, but what do you need today? Do you need peace? Do you just need his presence today? Do you just need to feel him wrap his arms around you? Can we just practice this today in this moment? We're going to just take the next 20 seconds. We'll just kind of have quiet here. Tell God what you need today. And then with your eyes closed and your heads bowed, the second part is, and thank him for all that he's done. We take another 20 seconds and just thank him for what he's done for us. You can open your eyes if you want. <clears throat> Listen to this next verse, right? We just read, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. And then it says in verse 7, then you will experience what, church? God's peace, which exceeds anything that we, we, we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts and our minds as we live in who? In Christ Jesus. Here's a verse, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. We don't have it on the screen, but it's a continuation of what we just read. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Here's another scripture that Peter says. Give all your worries and cares to God because why, church? Sometimes we have to do that several times a day. (laughs) But it's a reminder today that we can give him our cares and our worries. Is that that what we're doing? I would ask you that today. Are you you giving your cares and your worries to God or or are you trying to take them on your own? I think it's important to, to not only give those things to God and to talk to talk to the Lord about those things, but I also think it's important. Maybe we need to talk to someone. I shared a couple weeks ago, um, I went and talked to Dr. Bowman, who was here last week. Maybe some of us need to talk to someone just to get our words out or, or to get encouragement or to go talk to a doctor. But the reality is we are not alone. God is with us. Amen? And the reality is light doesn't just come at the end of the tunnel. Jesus died so that we could have light in the tunnel. Take comfort in that today. 
that we serve a God that provides his presence and his power and his spirit regardless of what we're dealing with. Amen? So as our worship band comes up today, let's stand together. Lord Jesus, we thank you today, Lord, that you identify with our suffering. You identify with every struggle, temptation, Lord, that we've dealt with. And Lord, today there's some in here this morning that are dealing with anxious thoughts or anxiety, fear, doubt, worry, stress, just feelings of uneasiness. And Father, if, that, if, that's, if that's us today, God, would, would you just surround them this morning with your comfort and your encouragement? May they know that they're not alone and that you love them, that you never leave us nor forsake us. And Father, we give you praise for who you are. In Jesus' powerful name, everybody said, amen.